Hey everybody, I'm Todd Clippinger and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. It's February 2015 and it's Get Woodworking Week. Get Woodworking Week is the week where um, content producers and woodworking bloggers get together and try to put out information and videos and encourage others to get out and get woodworking, to start your woodworking journey. And I want to share with you a couple of projects that I've done in the past, and hopefully they provide some inspiration and motivation for you to get out and get woodworking. On my right, I have a bookcase. It was the very first project that I built when I started buying tools and learning to read a tape measure and put things together. Now, I like to think of my projects as time capsules because each project represents and encapsulates the skill and the talent and the knowledge that I had at the time that I built that. As you can see, if you take a look at the bookcase, it's not very good. The proportions, um, kind of horrible. It's a bit gaudy. The stain's blotchy. The finish isn't very good. But you know what? It was the best that I could do at the time. And I was very proud when I completed the project. As time moved on and I gained more skill and experience, I, I kind of became uh, embarrassed about that project. And, and I'm glad that I hung on to it, though, because it's a benchmark of where I've came from. So this really is my first you know, woodworking project that I pursued as a woodworker. Now, fast forward to more recent history in my woodworking journey, and I have this prairie chandelier. This is on a stand right now, but it's actually intended to be hung from a 16, 18 foot ceiling. This piece was the piece that I made when I was invited to be a part of a fine woodworking exhibition at one of the regional museums. I was one of two dozen people invited to show, and this this was the piece that I made. So this is museum quality work that, that you're looking at. This is the pinnacle of my woodworking career at the time that I made it. But guess what? This bookcase, as bad as it is, was the pinnacle of my woodworking uh, journey at that time that I made it as well. So really, every project that we make is a time capsule for where we were at that time in our woodworking journey. So what I want you to think about now is don't be embarrassed about your projects. This was the best I could do at that time, and I'm no longer embarrassed about it. That's the best I could do. It's, it's all I knew. And it's a great benchmark. It's a history and a record of what I knew at that time. And this is a history and record of what I knew at the time that I made it. There's a great deal of maturing that went on between these two projects. But guess what, guys? You can't get here unless you start there. We all start at the bottom and we have to grow, but you won't grow, and this is the secret to woodworking, you won't grow unless you get out in the shop and get woodworking. You've got to put hands on tools, tools to material, and start building projects. If you're not building projects, you're not developing uh, and beating that path from your brain to your hand. You have to, you, you have to make those connections from your brain to your hand. You're only going to do that if you get out in the shop and get woodworking to make those connections from repetition. Also, you're going to develop your design sense if you get out and you get woodworking. First, you're going to start off building projects probably from plans. And whether you follow them uh, closely or loosely, you're going to be um, just making what else is out there. And that's fine because you need to start building that repetition that we talked about. And then uh, you'll start getting a sense of design and proportions and how one piece relates to another. You'll also learn how things are put together. I made a table between these two pieces. In my woodworking journey, I made a table with, with kind of Asian-inspired legs. It was made out of mahogany, and the table was beautiful. It was really the point, the threshold that I stepped across when I felt like that I was starting uh, my foray into fine woodworking. And the legs I had seen in another local shop, I was, I was doing a remodel project, and the shop had a, a dining set with chairs and had these, these legs. Well, I decided to take those legs and put them on an arts and crafts design table. So I took an arts and crafts design and simply started modifying it with the suede legs. And I built a beautiful table. That table was part of my juried portfolio that got me into the Western Design Conference. It was a very high-end juried show for artists and craftsmen. So um, I want to tell you a little secret about that. I did. I had this great idea of, of making this table, but I, I really didn't know anything about joinery. So I first I cut biscuits 
in uh, slots in the end of the stretchers and in the legs for the mating pieces. And then I started putting them together. And then I realized, I started thinking to myself, well, that's not going to hold. Biscuits aren't going to hold. So then I put pocket screws in too. So here, this really nice, sophisticated looking piece of woodwork. I had, at, at the time, I had a great idea. My finish work actually spraying finishes. I was getting very good at that time at doing that. And I had a good choices on my materials. So I had good material interpretation, but I still was well into my journey learning how to put things together. So um, I, I started out with biscuits and then I ended up using combination of biscuits and pocket joinery all on all the same joints. So there's some of my sins that I'm kind of uh, confessing to you guys. But you know what, guys? Um, something I want to point out is I didn't know what to do at that point. I had some great ideas, but I was at a certain point in my woodworking journey. I just didn't know how to put it together. I didn't have the skill or the talent to put to use mortise and tenon, and and I just couldn't do it at that time. But but it's a great representation of and and that, and record of where I was in my woodworking journey. And guess what, guys? You're going to make similar mistakes. You're going to have blotchy finish like I have on this bookcase. You're going to have poor finish. You're going to, you're going to struggle through your finishes. And I have too. And I, you know, you only get better if you get experience. And you, ha you only get experience is if you get out and you get woodworking. So that means you have to get out in the shop and you have to build. So you, know, you can't develop your skills. You can't develop your design sense. You... Um, you just can't develop your ability to finish anything unless you get out in the shop. You're going to develop more efficiency and you will become safer as you become more skilled at functioning in your shop, as long as you don't become a complacent, of course. So anyways, I just wanted to share these projects with you and the stories related to them because I think um, what you need to understand is I didn't get to this point without a lot of struggles and starting from this point and this bookcase. So, um, you know, we all start climbing the ladder at the bottom, guys, and you're going to start there too. I want to encourage you to get out in the shop, continue to build, and mature as an artist, as a craftsman, a designer, a maker, all these things. You got to get the experience. So basically, in this video, I have given you the secret to woodworking, which is get out and get woodworking. Get in the shop, get experience. So until next time, guys, this is all I have for you. And get out in the shop, get woodworking, and be safe in your own shop. Um.